Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It, uh, I feel uh, very honored to have this opportunity talking about uh, <coughs> challenging robotics in conjunction with uh, <coughs> Professor Gert Hildinger's uh, work. Uh, my talk will be consisted of uh, four parts. Uh, in part one, first, uh, just allow me uh, to look back my robotic research, robotic life, a little bit uh, for introducing myself. 46 years ago, I graduated from University of Tokyo uh, Mechanical Engineering Department and started robotic research as my graduate study. Five years later, I completed my Doctor of Engineering work uh, in developing computer-controlled, force-sensitive uh, mechanical hand to carry out various tasks. This is uh, the scene uh, uh, of the manipulator and the computer which I used uh, 40, uh, about 40 years ago. And, uh, Ah, ah, this is not working. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a scene, uh, and uh, this robot hand has tactile sensors and force sensors at that time. Uh, and uh, <coughs> this is a centering motion using the tactile sensors and to, to grasp in center without moving uh, object. And uh, this robot can search the object and to grasp it firmly. And when it uh, pulls the uh, blocks, then a uh, robot hand feels the reaction force and releases it. This is also the same. After confirming the landing of the uh, 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 block, then it releases. Uh, this stacking motion is also the same. So it is not checking if the landing is completed or not. And then the landing, uh, <coughs> after uh, confirming the landing, it releases. In such a way, uh, we can uh, start uh, blocks uh, very uh, <coughs> precisely. And this is the prototype work uh, of the uh, machine assembly. A robot uh, tried to p uh, pull out the pin from the hole and then uh, <coughs> moves uh, around uh, the another hole and uh, to search the hole position uh, by uh, uh, the uh, uh, sense of uh, force. And uh, the uh, rea uh, reaction force is changed. Uh, it, uh, nodes, uh, it uh, find the hole and pull into. This is, a, 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 this is my a very young age. Uh, this is a crank rotation. The purpose of my uh, research for the uh, graduate study is to complete this work. Uh, this, is very, uh, this is also uh, one uh, experiment for the uh, compliant motion for a computer control arm. The computer which I used at that time was very small and slow. Uh, actually, uh, the memory size uh, of the computer which I used is just only 4,000 watt. And the uh, computational speed is also slow. For instance, fixed point addition it takes uh, four milliseconds, uh, four microseconds. So computer and uh, so small and slow. Uh, but uh, the demonstration which I showed now, everything is in the, inside uh, that small uh, memory. This slide shows uh, a brief summary of my robotics life uh, from uh, my graduate study Timeline in the uh, top, uh, 
from uh, 1965 to 2004. That is the retirement uh, of the University of Tokyo uh, of myself. During those 40 years uh, with my student, uh, we challenged to study uh, many, every uh, component of the uh, intelligent robotics, manipulation, uh, robot design and control, uh, vision systems, and uh, various sensors, all kinds of intelligence and programming environment for, real, uh, 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 for various sensors. And uh, also uh, uh, integration of the systems. The last five years of my uh, study uh, is uh, devoted to develop humanoid. The reason is, reason one, I thought humanoid uh, is an ultimate goal, target, to integrate all aspects of robotic function, perception, manipulation, mobility, intelligence of all kinds, communication with humans, uh, and also energy and structure. All of them must be embedded into the limited size, limited weight, and limited shape. And uh, the sec uh, second reason is, uh, through uh, my uh, long-term uh, uh, long research in my, uh, with my student, uh, the policy of uh, our laboratory is create anything which we need. And uh, taking this uh, policy, uh, we have developed uh, and accumulated all the necessary functions. Uh, uh, so I think it is a time to integrate them uh, to build the humanoid. Because otherwise, I, will, um, I must be retired before completing one thing. So <coughs> this is uh, one example uh, of the experiment. This is a vision and uh, motion planning and the interaction uh, with robot. Uh, the, my uh, student and robot are uh, doing the ball games. Uh, but uh, my student is not so kind enough for robot to uh, give the uh, pink ball. So, and also uh, this is the interaction through the vision systems and the, uh, uh, planning and the motion. And uh, this uh, is uh, done about 10 years ago. And uh, in March 24, 2004, uh, I did my final lecture uh, on my retirement from the university. After the lecture, I had a big surprise. My student uh, <coughs> prepared some uh, uh, experiment. Uh, my humanoid H6 climbed up the stairs like this uh, and uh, come at the center of the uh, stage. And robot began uh, to turn around this experiment. My student knows my first work is turning the crank. And uh, for at the uh, time of the retirement, uh, my student gave me a, a very surprising present for me to show this same turning a crank motion uh, at the time of my final lecture. Uh, I feel very, very happy at that time. Then uh, I will go uh, into the part two. Two years ago, Japanese government, high-level committee of space development, launched a special working committee for feasibility study of moon exploration uh, by robot. I was involved uh, as a committee member, and I proposed to sending humanoid uh, on moon for exploration. This is a rough sketch uh, for the, uh, <coughs> the story. Uh, and uh, in that case, I think, uh, uh, technically, uh, two things. One is to create a humanoid. Another is to make uh, the robot uh, really working uh, in the uh, moon environment. The physical condition on the moon 
is extremely severe, not only for human beings, but also for machine design. The surface temperature is 120 degrees in daytime Celsius uh, and minus 170 degrees at night. Atm atmosphere is all of vacuum. As you know, vacuum environment causes severe problem for heat transfer and tribology. We must overcome the tem uh, temperature and vacuum uh, for machine design. By the way, there is a myth that the component of space machine need to develop extremely special, but I don't think so. I pro uh, propose to solve this uh, problem by robot wearing space suit. The space suit separates two worlds. Inside the space suit is the atmosphere of the, on the Earth, outside the moon. So my idea is, uh, if we enclose machine inside the space suit, uh, we can use the common part, which is used on the Earth. It, it extremely reduces the cost of machine development. And uh, this is a design concept of lunar humanoid. Uh, I uh, want to take the modular design concept. A drive unit, that is the integration of motor reduction amplifier control CPU, and the connecting modules. And the structure of the unit, uh, and the connecting uh, module unit, uh, utilizes the easy assembly and repair. And through this uh, connecting module, not only the mechanical connection, but also we can uh, design the electrical communication and the power supply too. Uh, the second uh, remote brain approach uh, in the uh, onboard computer for the uh, human, which is a uh, very severe environment, radioactive uh, environment, uh, we uh, need to uh, special uh, electric circuit. Uh, therefore, the computer power is uh, quite limited. The onboard computer is limited, and outside, the lunar base has a big computer that is protected uh, very good and communicate with uh, each other. Uh, this uh, method, uh, we, uh, we uh, think, uh, we uh, uh, call it remote brain approach. Brain is a remote place on the base, and this will be explained uh, Professor Inaba uh, soon. Uh, the detail of that. The third is a software platform is needed, and uh, uh, fourth is a uh, supervisory remote uh, robot maneuver uh, is a key. Not all the uh, autonomous robot, but we need some uh, uh, shared autonomy uh, remote control. And uh, self-protection by space suit, I said uh, right now. And another point is uh, when moving, uh, uh, very complex system like humanoid, uh, drive unit more than 40, then usually uh, the uh, uh, reliability decreases very much. But if we have the technology to replace uh, the uh, module uh, which is uh, uh, going out of order, then the uh, uh, reliability increases very much. So uh, using this concept design, uh, the robot uh, which must be uh, sent on the moon uh, has the capability to repair by themselves. So if we uh, send uh, three or four uh, humanoids uh, on the moon, sometimes uh, one humanoid uh, provides uh, the drive unit and the connecting unit for repairs. In such a way, we can uh, make uh, the very reliable system in theoretically. Uh, I'm uh, going to the third part. Professor Hiltinger and I met at ISRR3. Uh, about ISRR, uh, John Horabak, Professor John Horabak, uh, mentioned very much. Uh, and uh, the first time uh, I met uh, is uh, ISRR3, uh, that is in 1985. And uh, the third uh, ISRR uh, was held at the Gubbio, France. And uh, uh, Dr. Hiltinger invited uh, into this uh, symposium. And in this symposium, 
he uh, talked, presented about the robot learning and teaching based on sensory field. This is a very good presentation, and it is a very good uh, theory and practice uh, of the uh, uh, <coughs> uh, force feedback system. Uh, not only the turning crank, and also, also the two-hand uh, coordination and so on. Next time I heard uh, about, uh, <coughs> I heard from uh, uh, Gerd is in 1993. Uh, he talked about very famous Rotex at that time. So um, uh, most of the, uh, the first uh, 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 ISR3 uh, is uh, well uh, defined and moved onto the space, and it works very much. And after then, uh, he uh, moved, uh, uh, defined uh, and uh, improved and uh, developed a very key component uh, and uh, the, uh, he uh, developed lightweight arm and also up to Justin. Justin is growing back. Uh, yesterday we saw uh, that uh, experiment. Historically, we, Japan, learned a lot of technology from Germany. And we recognize and respect Germany as a country of technology. Uh, German technology always stand on firm technological base and extend it to a real machine through steady and continuous technical effort. I highly appreciate DLR robot activity as an excellent example of such German spirit. I admire uh, that the Aerospace Laboratory, DLR, also allowed to develop high technologies just to down to us. I agree that approach is very important for uh, the role of the space development. As Gert and his group showed yesterday, DLR uh, developed so many accomplishments, and uh, that accomplishment made, uh, makes the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, the title of this symposium uh, challenges in robotics down to us. That is also reflect uh, Gert Hiltinger's uh, research life for many, many years ago. I'm moving into the last part. I am proposing a challenge in robotics uh, for future technology. The, this is a rough sketch uh, of current example of uh, advanced robots. We know many cutting-edge uh, activities, robot, uh, <coughs> robotics, uh, continuing year by year. So, robot coaster, cooker, and also the winglet, the urban challenge, big dog, Todai JSK is uh, doing the uh, home works by humanoid, and Kawada next stage is introducing uh, the upper uh, body uh, humanoid into the production line. And also, we have many uh, <coughs> human robot. Uh, as you know, uh, we, Japan, has a challenge to develop full-size humanoid, uh, not only uh, government projects, but also the private companies like Toyota uh, and Honda and uh, also. Generally, they have been challenged at technology driver project. And uh, I will show some recent uh, uh, example of uh, the intelligent humanoid in, in Japan. One example is not moving. Okay, uh, this is uh, <coughs> this uh, robot uh, moves around very complex uh, terrain. So this is uh, prepared for the uh, very complex uh, terrain, and uh, 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 the 3D position is uh, detected by 3D laser sensors. And automatic footstep planning on, in real time is done and uh, moving like this. Mm, this is uh, uh, not only the steps, but also the slopes and uh, uh, using uh, on the uh, many kind of uh, surface. When I am involved in the uh, lunar project, uh, I asked somebody, said, 
uh, current uh, uh, human cannot work. So my colleague tried to work on sun. So uh, it is possible to work uh, uh, up uh, right now. And uh, two, we, uh, two weeks ago, maybe you know, most of uh, know about uh, the YouTube and so on. Honda uh, Asimo uh, uh, opened uh, new Asimo. Uh, this is a performance of the new Asimo, uh, which is uh, uh, announced and opened two weeks ago. This is just uh, jumping, one uh, leg and two legs, and so on. So it means uh, the progress on the uh, uh, servo system becomes very good. And the speed of the running, nine kilometer per hour, very good speed. And also, uh, they also took the kick the ball. Maybe Justin will, uh, will uh, grab it, the goalkeeper, I think. Yeah, they also developed a new uh, uh, multi finger hand uh, on a new Asimo. Uh, they have a, a very new design and it uses this kind of uh, uh, motion. Uh, that is shown uh, yesterday, uh, uh, DLR group showed like this. Take it out, uh, the uh, <coughs> legs and uh, pours uh, the uh, orange juice, I don't know, but uh, something like it. So not only this kind of uh, operations, the uh, Honda team is uh, developing the intelligence uh, to uh, uh, recognize human motions and uh, coordinate together. So, uh, my challenge is a, a grand challenge is I recognize the challenge to humanity uh, as very good technology driver project. New parts, new theories, and a new system architecture can be tested in those challenges. Eight months ago, we had a huge disaster uh, of earthquake and a tsunami, and it destroyed uh, Fukushima nuclear power uh, station. At that time, uh, many people wanted to do it by robot, but we didn't uh, not prepare any robot yet. Uh, I think for robotics researchers, uh, we need to develop uh, the robot uh, for such a severe environment case. So the challenge which uh, one thing is develop surrogate or avatar that work in severe environment are human agent in case of emergency or severe uh, accident. Uh, this uh, uh, kind of things must be uh, co uh, consisted of two parts. One is an innovative uh, cockpit for remote maneuver of humanoid. And uh, another is smaller and stronger flexible humanoid. Task and environment, which I expect is in case of severe accident at a chemical or a nuclear plant, reconnaissance, emergency measures, restore services, and operation is access by ladder to any place and raise the lever, raise with the lever something, move by tumbling, make passage uh, for itself to move uh, into use of tools and operate machine. That kind of th thing is needed uh, to uh, uh, do uh, some emergency measures uh, and uh, uh, such kind. So uh, the topics to be challenged in this system is like this. <coughs> There are two parts. One is a cockpit, brain computer interface, haptic control, whole body motion maneuver system. I don't know how uh, can we do, but uh, not uh, just the uh, master slave uh, doesn't work. Uh, shared autonomy of the robot and the human uh, is the key of the things. And uh, the robot I uh, propose in this system, the smaller, 
and stronger body is needed. Maybe 80% uh, in size uh, would be better to go into very narrow space. And also, uh, robot power must be 150% uh, than uh, uh, average adult. Uh, and uh, in such a way, uh, uh, we have to challenge for a long time. Uh, accent and the disaster always exceed our expectation. Thus, it is difficult of 100% preparation beforehand. In order to measure such unexpected severe situation, we need to have universal robot uh, that works as a human agent. It is uh, not too late to begin human project for severe accident, accident measuring. It is a reason uh, to propose uh, this challenge. Uh, and at the end of my talk, I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to Professor Hiltinger. And I was told uh, he is uh, reaching uh, his commencement uh, from DLR in not so far future. Everybody knows uh, he accomplished so many results and he made DLR uh, as the world top ranking me uh, mechatronics and robot center. Uh, when he will be free from the obligation and uh, responsibilities of DLR, uh, it implies it will be a good chance for him to do robotics uh, for wider and higher viewpoint and standpoint, not dedicated to DLR, not dedicated to Germany, uh, so international and uh, all, all the world. So, uh, I, oh, uh, I am uh, retired uh, already, and uh, I welcome Gert to join us uh, as a member of Free Guys Club. And uh, one of the uh, reasons uh, why I, I uh, propose this project, I uh, really want to do sometimes uh, this kind of project together. Okay, thank you very much.